I walk back, walk up, walk back, walk up, walk back, boom. And it worked. Hello YouTube, we're back with another Street Fighter 6 guide and we're going to be talking about the neutral game. We're going to become footsies gods, okay? So it's going to be part one of a, probably a long series of talking about neutral, breaking it down. And we're actually going to be going over one of the most well-renowned guides in footsies. If you've played Street Fighter before, you've heard of it probably. If this is your first Street Fighter, you'll hear of it again in the future. It's called the footsies guidebook or handbook. I don't even remember. It's handbook. Um... So this is a very old uh, kind of guide on the neutral game, but it uses a lot of examples from super old games. And I'm gonna, we're gonna read it together. I'm gonna talk about some of the examples. And I'm gonna show you examples in Street Fighter VI instead of these old boomer games where you can't even understand what's happening. Let's get started. Okay, the footsies handbook. Footsies is an old school slang for the mid-range ground-based aspect of fighting game strategy. The ultimate goal is to control the flow of the match, bait the opponent into committing errors, and punish everything, right? So that's something you're gonna have to remember a lot. We're trying to, at a lot of these situations, we're baiting opponents to do very particular things. You might ask yourself throughout a lot of these, what if my opponent doesn't do what is in this example? Well, then there's another strategy, okay? We're, we're just, just keep that in mind. Anyway, anyone who wants to compete at tournament level absolutely needs to know this stuff. You don't have to use it, but you have to be aware it exists. Now, this is 100% true. Even if you don't use some of the tactics, people will use them to you, and you need to know the counterplay. You need to know what they're trying to bait out of you and what you could do instead. Okay, so each installment covers three or four specific tactics, which you can integrate into your game plan to achieve practical results. Think of it like one of those chess books showing common situations and how to solve each one. I love this example. If you absorb enough of these pieces, suddenly you'll have a solid game plan. Yeah, so I love a lot of this. I love this this last piece because we're not showing you like, do this and do this all the time and you win neutral. It's not like that. You think of it like chess where it's like, here's thousands of moves. And if you get pretty good at all of them, you'll have the best neutral ever. And that's like, sounds maybe kind of frightening but it's one of the reasons neutral is such a hard topic and it's so impressive when someone has a good neutral because there's no just right or wrong answers in a lot of these situations it's about knowing how to deal with so many random not random but particular different things okay so for this uh video we're only going to talk about chapter one here there's three big elements i'll show you examples in street fighter 6. a lot of people make the mistake of assuming that footsies is something you whip up on the fly while you certainly can do it on the fly and while freestyling footsies is a valuable skill the fact of the matter is that alex valley knows more about footsies than you'll ever know Maybe that's not true. We're gonna we're gonna become gods. The real problem is you don't even know what you're supposed to know. You don't even know that you're supposed to know these things. Well, now you now you do. Footsies as a whole is such a dynamic, complex subject that it's impossible to convey or grasp at once. So we're gonna try something different. Let's approach footsies like a collection of situations and try to come up with elemental solutions for each scenario. Practice these one by one until you're comfortable enough with them to incorporate them fluidly in your game plan. Okay. So we are on element one momentarily step into your opponent's poke range and then quickly back out instead of attacking right so you walk into a range where they want to poke you and then you just walk out and you bait them to use that poke we'll use the example here and then i'll show you one in street fighter 6. this is footsies 101 to see in action check out mike watson's hyper fighting guile demolishing some poor guy two consecutive full rounds of toying with his opponent's neutral reactions what you're gonna see here is i'm sure a lot of people in this video probably have never played hyper fighting you're gonna be like why is ken dp'ing can dp might as well be a poke in this game it's very very low uh end lag or recovery frames it's just it beats a lot of things so you're gonna see that when mike watson walks up his guile ken is gonna naturally want to beat his like if he presses a button if he walks too far he wants to dp him because dp is much lower committal in this game than you would probably be used to in street fighter 5 or 6. So watch this i haven't watched this in forever but we're gonna wait for him to watch wait, is he gonna walk up okay he's starting to walk up ken's gonna see this he wants to dp it EDPs. Mike Watson walk back a step, punishes. Again, walk up, walk up. Here, here it comes. Okay, not yet. We'll probably see here. Yeah, okay. Walk up, walk back. One more time. Walk up, walk back. And three times in a row. Walk up, walk back, can DP'd. That's a little awkward maybe because if you're not used to hyper fighting, I'll show you an example in Street Fighter 6. This is me playing on last night, two nights ago with my friend. I'm trying to bait him to press Ken's crouching medium kick. A lot of Ken's like this button. Even if you press crouching medium punch, it would have worked as well. If you press a longer reaching poke, like that flippy kick thing Ken does, you know, I think it's like he has like the target combo. I don't know. Then he would have beat me, but that's not what I was looking for because I was expecting this. So watch, you can see right here. I'm just walking back and forth, walking back and forth. He presses it, punish, right? You can even see like seconds ahead that I'm waiting for this, right? Okay, I walk back, walk up, walk back, walk up, walk back, boom. And it worked. 
We'll do one more time. Right here, you can see. I walked back because my pressure. I did a minus one move. I wasn't really sure what to do next. So I just walked to a space I'm comfortable with. Now I want him to press a poke. So I walk forward. He jumped. I walk forward again. It works. That punish was poopy. I should have done heavy punch into like drive rush or something. But it worked. Okay. Next example. Element two. Determine which of your combos and attack strings position your opponents barely outside their effective reversal range, especially when facing characters with greater mobility. One of the best ways to trick someone into wasting meter and handing you the match is by making yourself appear falsely vulnerable. There's no better example of this concept than the famous final exchange. Okay, uh, I don't really like this, but I'm gonna talk about spacing traps because it's kind of a similar topic. I don't think this is something that like people do these days. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. But what, essentially what's gonna happen is, so Sagat's gonna, I remember watching this when I first read this, okay. Okay, so Sagat's gonna cross up uh, Ken here, and Ken's gonna do a reversal, but it just straight up doesn't reach because Sagat is too far. Right here. So he does this, which makes it look like maybe he's super minus in your face, but it actually pushes you back far enough that Ken does a reversal. It doesn't work. Sagat does his reversal back, right? So I'm not sure how apl applicable this is to normal, to like current Street Fighter. I don't feel like a lot of people. Maybe, maybe I'm just not playing the right ranks, but a lot of people don't kind of YOLO like wake up supers unless they know it's like in a thing where it'll hit. But one thing I want to talk about is spacing trap. So what is a spacing trap? It's very similar to what we saw, except it doesn't have to be a super. It could be any normal. So it's when you, you, you have a very particular structure in your offense where you finish your offense with a move that leaves you minus. So the opponent thinks it's their turn, but you actually push them too far back to actually do any like meaningful poke back to you. They would have to super commit with like a, a sweep and people don't usually do that right so here's an example you might notice that if you played as against a jamie before they probably already done this to you um he's he does like oops he does like uh whoops he ends up uh, he ends a block string with his reka and his reka is minus six as you can see so we might want to punish it with a six frame move what is our six frame move as cami the stand heavy uh stand medium punch okay so let's see what happens when jamie ends his pressure with a reka i'm gonna try to stand medium punch it because you know he's minus six that's my six frame button i'm gonna give you a spoiler it's not gonna reach because he's he, this string purposely leaves you outside of moves that are six frames i don't know if there's any character in the game that has a six frame uh six frame button that'll reach this far so here we go i'm pressing medium punch i immediately get hit all right that, that's this is something that you can cook up on the fly anywhere, right? So I'm gonna make one up right now I'm not making this up because I do this, but I've never actually like tested it We're gonna make him block all and we're gonna make him on block. We're gonna make him crouching medium kick I don't even know if this will work against Jamie because he has a very good crouch medium kick, right? So about this range where you restart the match you move forward. Okay, I press this is Kami People know that this move is minus and they want to take their turn there's not a single button in the game that's four frames, even five, six, seven, probably, that'll reach Kami at this range. Just medium kick pushes you back too far, right? So if Jamie tries to use his crouch medium kick, this happens a lot. I could probably find clips. I should have heard before the video where I'll press this move and I'll just wait for them to press a button back on block. You get the fattest punish of your life, okay? I don't even have to really time this. I'm just waiting a sec, pressing heavy punch. As you can see, you know, you can get a fat punish for such a very simple situation that you probably come across all the time in your matches. You made someone block this move. You pay attention. What do they do? The first time you do this move in neutral, you notice, oh, he's trying to he's trying to hit me, but he can't because I'm too far away. Maybe maybe you do this move and someone just blocks and they're hold blocking because they don't want to get spacing trapped. And you know, you dive kick at them. Uh, my dive kick suck on leverless. But yeah, you, or you walk forward. But if you notice that they do fall for it and they press a button, you get the freest punish of your life. So yeah, this is what's called the spacing trap. You'll see it everywhere in Street Fighter 6 at high level play. People end their strings purposely in a way that pushes you too far to want, like you, it looks like you should be able to retaliate, but they push you too far away and then they counter poke you. Okay, let's talk about the last one. Element three. Once you've established a pattern of poking consistently at a certain range, use your opponent's hesitation to walk up and throw them. It's always dangerous to wander into enemy space, so wait until you're certain you've trained them to think twice about pushing buttons. Now, I have the perfect example for this because it's the same video of element one. So in element one, I walked back and forth and the Ken pressed medium kick and he got whiff punished. Any good player is gonna realize that happened and be like, okay, maybe I don't wanna press medium kick there again. So they might press jabs or they might just block because they don't wanna get whiff punished, right? 
Don Choi does an EX, EX, an excellent job of demonstrating this principle for the entire first round of this match. There's no way he would have gone away with such gutsy throw attempts at the beginning, right? But as you can see here. So John Choi is Sakura. And Sakura has her standing heavy kick, I think it is. This button right here. No one wants to walk into this button. Look, he's just using it nonstop. So the Iori is scared. He walks up and throws him. You use a you, you you have to make your opponent scared to press buttons, right? In this case, it's because he's so aggressively poaching with poking with the stand heavy kick. And in this case that I'm about to show you, it's because when I'm walking back and forth, Ken is scared to hit a button, right? Last time I walked back and forth, this is what happened. He whiffed. Okay, this is the same game, right? What, what are we at? 34 seconds? Let's go to 130. A minute later. One minute later. Okay, so I'm walking back and forth, and now I'm I'm doing what the soccer did. I'm pressing standing heavy kick because I, because I noticed a while ago that he he like he's so much more patient, right? He's only pressing jabs. He's only pressing, uh, he's only pressing jabs, or he's neutral jumping, or he's blocking. So what do I do? Just walk up and throw him. Boom! Right, it's very similar to what we saw in the soccer video. Standing heavy kicks because he's he's being much more patient now. I'm walking back and forth. I notice he's not biting. He's not biting. He's not biting. Standing heavy kick. He's not biting. He's not biting. He's only doing jabs. Walk up throw. Okay, so I hope you learned something from these three elements. There's much more to go. Uh, I'll try to finish the footsies handbook. There's so many very good small tips. Like I said in the beginning, think of these as pieces, as moves in a chess uh, game. You don't just do one of these things over and over. You mix them all up and up because the better players you fight, they're gonna like like we just saw in the video against Ken. You realize very quickly he cannot just withstand medium kick, so he stopped whiffing it. He started blocking, he started using low committal moves like jabs. So now we have to adapt. We use our standing heavy kick. We walk up throw him because he's scared. These are all things that are going to mesh together the longer this series goes. I don't know how many videos I'll make. Just remember, try to remember as many as you can. And then, you know, you mix up your neutral. And it becomes very hard for you, for your opponent to kind of read what you want to do next. And uh, anyway, I'm not going to ramble on because hopefully there'll be more videos on this subject. If there's something you want to know in particular, let me know. I hope you learned something. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscription. Stay beautiful, my friends. I'll see you next time.